Good afternoon. I'm lucky. The clock has been stopped. <laughs> and I needed that because I can talk hours and hours about 3D printing. Shoot, he's ticking again. Oh boy. <laughs> I shouldn't have said that. Okay, let's talk about 3D printing. Who knows something about 3D printing? Can you tell something about it? What is it? Powder, yeah. Yeah, correctly. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's about uh, 30 years ago. And it was uh, uh, invented in Israel and not the United States. And why Israel? Because at that time there was a, a problem with some parts from their aircraft defense. They couldn't get a part. And always Israel is uh, a difficult uh, uh, surrounding. So they decided to create their own parts. And that's where 3D printing was started. And then um, in 1985, there was uh, this guy from America. He saw it. And he was re-engineering it. And in 1987, um, he brought it uh, to the world. So everybody thinks it's an American invention. It's not. But anyway, that's right. You may have power. This used to be powder. Hi, let's shake hands. <laughs> How does it feel? <laughs> it's amazing, eh? It's all made from one part. You can try it. But I want to have it back, please. Thank you. Okay. Uh, 3D printing. Um, we have several um, names for it. Uh, they also call it uh, layer manufacturing because the model will be created layer by layer. Uh, rapid manufacturing, uh, rapid prototyping. But let's see what's really happening with 3D printing. And first you see the machine. It's from EOS, uh, German uh, 3D uh, printing manufacturing. And uh, you see uh, the powder uh, nylon. And now I have to wait for the technique. Guys, I'm ready. E-manufacturing from EOS. All EOSynth systems are based on the principle of laser sintering. This technology allows for fast, flexible and cost-effective production directly from 3D CAD data. Special software slices the data into thin layers of up to as little as a few hundredths of a millimeter in thickness. In the shortest possible time, your design evolves into metal or plastic end products, tooling inserts or casting cores. A recoater spreads powder-based material onto a build platform. Laser energy then melts the material, forming a two-dimensional cross-section of the part. Then the build platform is lowered by one layer thickness. This process continues until all the layers of the part are generated. The technology manufactures fully dense products with homogeneous material properties. In a single process, one or more complex products emerge with movable components and hinges. E-manufacturing from EOS. Think the impossible. You can get it. Isn't that amazing? Your own ID, your wish, your dream. And now it's possible that you can touch it. You can actually touch your own dream, your wish. Suppose you have a, a complex uh, um, product and you want to improve it. How could you, how quick and easy can you improve it by using 3D print uh, technology? Do you have any idea? For example, um, when uh, Unilever, a uh, uh, big company, wants to have a new bottle, they can do 
two things. They can create this new bottle in the old way. It costs about uh, 12 till 15,000 euros for one prototype. And it will take about 14 weeks before it's ready. They can also come, of course, to my company. And then this same bottle will cost about 750 euros. And it's ready in five days. So it's not only the difference in money, but even more important, it's the time to market with 3D uh, print technology. You, make, you create a new time to market. Instead of waiting 16 weeks, you can bring your product to the market in two weeks. So it's amazing, it's very important to uh, stay ahead of your uh, competition. Um, they often ask me, Marjan, is it strong? Well, let me show you this one. This is a single mother bird. And to keep all the guys away, she has a special chain. It's loose around her neck. We all know uh, the coming troubles with the children. She has solved the problem. This little guy is actually helping his mother because his mother is a professional woodpecker. So is it strong? Please try it. Harder, come on. <laughs> can see everything can be broken <laughs> okay let's forget the nylon <laughs> because if you can use uh, nylon powder you can also use metal powder like this I'll show you first I'll show you how the, this technique works guys next one please This is what they call laser cusing. And what you can see is a product that's been made out of metal powder. It's absolutely awesome to see it because it's you see a lot of light. And the laser is melting the powder to a model like this, for instance. Please, do not give it to him, <laughs> please. <laughs> and by the way, those two uh, uh, 3D printing machines are in Hengelo, in uh, the Creatieve Fabriek, now calling Haasmeijer Hengelo. And if you want to see it, you're more than welcome. Anyway, if you can uh, use um, uh, nylon powder for uh, 3D printing and metal powder, can you imagine that there are people who are saying this will be our next industrial revolution? Can you imagine what we can create? what we can repair because this technique it's 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 amazing it's fascinating but think about uh, sustainability because with 3d printing you only use that amount of material you actually need so instead of a huge mass of stainless steel for instance now you can use only the powder you need and the power of uh, uh, the metal power it can be used endless and is it strong yes it's strong 
there have been uh, uh, an investigation about uh, the, the quality uh, from a printed part compared to a uh, not printed part and it's exactly the same, exactly. We use it a lot for um, the um, industrial market, but you can also use it for the consumer market. You know, the little ones, the leapfrog, the ultimaker, the bot maker. It's about 450, 500 euros, and you can buy your own uh, 3D printer. It's awesome. <laughs> but think about the medical uh, market. Last year, there was a, a lady from Belgium. She was uh, 83, 83 years old, and she had um, for years and years problems with her jaw because of cancer. So what they did, they made an MRI scan of her face, and especially her jaw. They sent it, uh, that file to a certified uh, company in Germany, it's a, a, a colleague of mine, and they printed a brand new jar for her, brand new. The operation um, was in, in the Netherlands, and after one day, she could move her mouth, she could eat, she could drink, and she could talk. And of course, the first things was, how, do you, how, how does it feel? And she said, I don't feel anything. It, it doesn't feel strange. It's like it's always been there. Another example for the medical uh, market. If you have a problem with your hip or your knee, and most some elderly people do have that problems, and you need surgery, you never get exactly that hip or that knee that you actually need. <coughs> what we're doing now is you're going to your, uh, your doctor, he's making an, uh, an MRI uh, scan, send it to a 3D, a specialized 3D print uh, company, and they print your <coughs> hip or your knee or your shoulder or your elbow or whatever. And then you get a phone call, you go to the hospital, and they change your knee, hip, elbow, or whatever you need. That's how far the 3D print technique already is. And it's only just the beginning. It's not yet Scotty beam me up, but it's, well, well, it is Scotty beam my hip up. Thank you.